Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. The question isn't can you think visually? Two thirds of people are good at thinking visually. The question is do you? Do you think visually? So when you look at this image, what do you see? Thanks to AWP and the Modesto B, a California-based news agency, we can see the crash site of the Honda from a few alternate perspectives. We've seen it from directly above and directly opposite, but this sidelong view is unusual. What can you see that you haven't seen or haven't been able to appreciate before? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. So firstly, notice there's not just one set of vehicle tracks leading to the water's edge. If you thought this was perfectly um, easy, you know, there's just one set of vehicle tracks, and that is where Kylie's vehicle is, well, just in this sort of isthmus um, it's not really the right word but this sort of peninsula this dirt peninsula going into the water there's quite a lot of vehicle tracks just in that little area if you look at the yellow arrows you can see these vehicle tracks and then between the orange arrows you get a sense of the gradual slope that is over the sort of dirt isthmus right the peninsula and then right at the end you can see how that gentle slope suddenly slopes a lot more severely downward. This image almost in profile shows even better just how steep the last section is as it drops down to the reservoir. Imagine trying to break on that short stretch of land and it's kind of muddy as well and here it's even clearer. This image with the buoy about 55 feet offshore shows just how far Kylie's vehicle drifted after it hit the water. And because there are a few people standing there, one gets a sense of the terrain on a human scale. And this is the very edge taken after the vehicle was retrieved. One can't really appreciate the three dimensions in this image, whereas in the one below, notice just how high above the water the level parking area is. Notice also the buoy in the background. That also shows you just how far it is from the person sitting viewing this. Obviously, he's not sitting at the edge of the water, but just look how far away that is. Now, imagine if you were driving at that point, what the headlights would show. I don't think it would show anything. It's difficult to say where the image of the patrol vehicle is taken, but if I had to guess, I'd say it was on the hilltop overlooking the crash site. You can see the very edge of land poking into the water behind the rear bumper, and I'm not sure there are any generous curves such as the one the vehicle is parked across, leading away from the viewer that's on that peninsula. So this appears to be too high. So anyway, given the undulating topography surrounding the reservoir, Kylie in the dark would not really have known what was going on because even with the lights on in the dark, the terrain falling away would simply appear as darkness. If we are to recreate just in our minds the way the vehicle struck the water, we need to begin with the end in mind. And what is the end? Well, the end is that the left driver's window was broken. We know that. We know that along... The left side, the uh, side view mirror was also broken, also on the left side, and the roof above the driver's console was dented in quite severely, and um, also the left driver's door slightly dented as well. So a lot of this damage is all on the left side, left side view, left passenger window or driver's window, and then also the roof right above the driver as well. There are no obvious scratch marks or dirt marks. These dents, in my opinion, were created by water force trauma on the, uh, exerted on the exoskeleton of the vehicle. Basically, a soft blunt object exerting force on a harder but also blunt object. 
This suggests that if the vehicle rolled, it did so not on land but in water. In fact, it may have rolled as it hit the water. We know AWP found the vehicle upside down. It also appears from the underwater footage that the rear was sort of sticking upward, somewhat elevated. Bear in mind that the vehicle is much heavier where the engine is, and so the engine would tend to sink first and sort of be heavier, whereas the other end might be lighter and have a certain degree of flotation. Of course, it's also possible when this image was taken, the flotation had already commenced and that's why it's at the angle that it is. Notice you can also just make out the RAM sticker above the Honda logo. From this footage, the vehicle also appears to be tilted slightly. Look at the line of the uh, number plate and alongside that, look at the angle of that. So it seems as if it's lying more on the right side than the left. The question is, did AWP rotate the vehicle so it could be towed backwards? Or did they find it facing nose first but upside down in the reservoir? Another way to imagine this is to build a scale model and to ride a scale vehicle into actual water and model the possibilities. There's also uh, computer animations that perhaps could model it as well. I suspect Kylie braked hard at the last moment, although this would have had very little impact on a deep downward muddy slope, it could have started the vehicle roll. Did the vehicle lose its left mirror upon entry or when the vehicle sank and hit the bottom? Did the glass break upon entry or did Kylie at least manage to break the glass? I'm talking about the door of the glass of the door. Did the vehicle hit the water and simply float forward 55 feet? Or did it turn and roll in a lazy pattern, obeying the laws of fluid dynamics around it? There are also no clear indications of mud or dirt on the mirror. One would imagine if the mirror spaded into the substrate, there would be. Once again, do you see, even with a relatively simple set of circumstances, the path of a vehicle down into water, it's still quite difficult to visualize what happened and how exactly it happened. In a general sense, I suppose one has to ask, driving any vehicle downhill fast into deep water, I'm talking about water deeper than you would experience on a road, water that would stop your vehicle kind of in its tracks, that is likely to cause the front of the vehicle to stop, wouldn't it? While the momentum from the rear would carry forward, perhaps causing the vehicle to basically somersault. And perhaps that's how and when the roof dented as it landed in relatively shallow water, still filled with air pockets, and then momentum still carrying it further from shore. Time will tell. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.